Hey there, so today I'm going to show you how you could run pretty much any AAA game on any mini PC on the market out there. Now there's going to be a lot of asterisks to this, as you would expect, but it is an interesting solution and I have found it to be effectively the best way to get any mini PC or any laptop or even any smartphone out there to play AAA PC games. So let's take a look at just how to do that. But first, this video is brought to you by Instant Gaming, your best source for finding the best deals on some of the most popular games out in the market right now. And to celebrate this new partnership, we are hosting a giveaway. So if you click the link down below, you can sign up for a chance to win any game out of Instant Gaming's catalog. And this catalog is extremely extensive, covering not just PC games, but console games as well. So no matter what you really play on, you're going to be able to find some great deals. So check it out down below and be sure to sign up for that giveaway. So getting this to work really relies on two things, the system that you see right in front of you right here, and a very neat little program called Sunshine. What Sunshine lets you do is it makes it extremely easy to self-host a game streaming server. What that effectively means is that, similar to GeForce Now or Xbox's own game streaming, you can essentially self-host and stream your own games to any device, and the benefit of doing it yourself like this is that one you have access to your entire game library and since it's running on your local network you're going to get maximum performance out of this but you might be wondering what exactly is in front of you here since there's not even a graphics card well this is essentially the remains of my previous main editing computer which had a ryzen 9 3900x and an rtx 3070 ti all of that running with 64 gigabytes of ram on this x 470 gaming pro carbon from msi it was a fantastic system that i've used for I think about three years now the main problem that i ran into is that recently after replacing my main system with a i9 12900k that i got from micro center on a great deal i had this just running while i was testing out some stuff and it just shut down looking into it what i can pretty much bring everything down to is the fact that the c CPU somehow died. I'm not 100% sure what exactly caused it to die, but it's dead. So I had to pretty much come up with a solution as to what I wanted to do here. Luckily, I had a 5600X3D that I picked up from Micro Center for around $160 when they were on sale a good while back and I kind of had it just sitting around not doing anything. So I figure if there's any system that would be great for it, it's this since this motherboard is fantastic. The cooler on it is absolutely overkill for this little Ryzen 5 and all that it really came down to was what I was going to use for a GPU. See, my main graphics card is this RTX 3070 Ti and well it's kind of a monster so it really won't fit in most cases and for a system like this it's really kind of overkill since we're going to be streaming games and you should most of the time have a 60 hertz cap on that in general but really this CPU is already overkill we could use something going back as far as second gen Ryzen and it would more than likely do the job and in terms of GPU performance we just need to be able to get some great results at 1080p we don't need to go any higher than that i figure that the best card to use is the rtx 3060 12 gigabyte it's going to be a low power card which is great because a system like this is essentially meant to be running 24 7 since you never know when you're just going to want to start streaming something and as such you kind of don't want it to use a lot of power in terms of idle and when you're gaming you kind of just don't want it to also be throwing a lot of heat into whatever room it's in. So I think it's the perfect combo for a system like this. Both of these parts together, the Ryzen 5 and the 3060, are going to be great at giving us awesome results in games and keeping that power usage as low as possible for a gaming system. And I'm happy that I was able to pick up this graphics card for only $200. Of course, the great thing about Sunshine is that it actually has wide support for pretty much every type of graphics card out there. So whether you want to use Nvidia, Intel, or AMD, it'll actually support it 
perfectly fine. Once you have your system pretty much built, or if you're already using a system that you have, you could pretty much go to GitHub and download the Sunshine installer from there. And once you actually have it installed, it will be running in your task tray and you can click on it to bring up the web interface. The web interface is extremely simple and it gives you a lot of control, but you're really not going to have to mess with pretty much anything. The main things you should focus on is pins and applications. If there are specific things that you're going to be wanting to launch that are outside of games, it's especially useful if you want to be able to launch games that are outside of Steam. So you can map everything there. And there is a lot that you can change within the configuration menu itself but the defaults are going to be great for 99% of people and if you are having issues with a specific device that you're trying to stream to you can maybe mess around with things here but you really have to know what you're doing the defaults are pretty much perfect for everyone the main thing you're really going to be doing on here is just the pin and that's because anytime you're going to pair a device with this server you do need to input a pin on here of course you don't have to do it on the device itself you can access this interface from anywhere in your network so what you're going to want to do is download a program called moonlight on your phone or tablet or mini pc and as soon as you open it up it's going to bring up this interface where you can can essentially pair your device with it it's going to give you a number and you're going to want to input that in the sunshine interface once you've done that you can pretty much immediately start using sunshine what i'm going to be using as my main system here is this little gmk tech g5 mini pc running an intel n95 processor or rather an n97 and this is extremely low power and as a consequence of that it's not designed to be a gaming system whatsoever Whatsoever. But I have it hooked up to this beautiful 13 inch OLED display, and we're going to be using this to play some AAA titles at some high graphics settings. So, again, to do this, we're going to need Moonlight. And of course, you can download Moonlight not just on the app stores, but you can download it directly from their website as well. Of course, just like before, as soon as you open, it's going to prompt you to pair it. So you input the code into the Sunshine interface, and just like that, you're paired. Within the Sunshine app, you're actually going to find quite a lot of settings. And here I am going to turn up the resolution to 1080p, and I can't adjust the bit rate, and I'm going to turn it up a bit. But I don't want to go crazy with it, just because I want to go with something that's a little bit realistic for what most people would use. Those are the settings here you really don't need to mess around with unless you're running into issues and the defaults are going to be good for the vast majority of people. And really all we have to do is click on the computer itself here and now we can either launch directly into the desktop or go into Steam and Steam will be launched in big picture mode. And this is great because I'm using an Xbox 360 controller paired with this little mini PC and it makes the experience here absolutely wonderful. And here you can see some of the games that I have installed. I'm going to jump right on into Fallout 4 and just see how it performs. So while trying to launch the game we do run into our first issue. And that's the fact that because it's a first time launch, it brings up this little interface here. Now, the Xbox controller does not work with this interface at all. I need to use my mouse to actually fix this. A pretty simple solution, but it is annoying to see. And depending on the device that you're using, it can sometimes become very inconvenient to try to interact with. But man, oh man, does Fallout 4 look great on this little OLED display. This is a 1080p little OLED display that I managed to pick up for $80 open box. And it looks absolutely gorgeous. And the game is running at the ultra graphics settings. It really is great. And as you can see by the performance numbers there, it might be hard for you to read, but we are getting a consistent locked 60 FPS. And that makes Makes sense because all this little mini PC is doing is it's rendering a video. It's not rendering a game. It might as well be watching a Twitch stream or a YouTube video or Netflix or anything like that. We're just streaming video to this device and that's what a little mini PC like this excels at. That's what they're designed for. They're extremely underpowered 
for being just four cores, but the media engine in here is so powerful that you could effectively watch anything on here and not even use that much power. I'm trying to do Ghost of Tsushima, but the part that I'm in is just so dark that the camera is just not capturing this well at all which is really unfortunate because the oled display is showing the contrast so beautifully and it just looks so bad on video but we are running the game at the high graphics settings and again great experience absolutely minimal latency while actually gaming the video is playing back at 60 fps no problem whatsoever so neither the mini pc or the desktop itself is having issues running the game at all. So switching over to something that's noticeably brighter, here we have Monster Hunter Rise. This is running at the high graphics setting. The game does, does support DLSS, but we just don't need DLSS in a title like this. In fact, while I don't recommend ever streaming a game at 120 hertz, if there's anything that's going to run that well, it's this. But of course, this OLED display only goes up to 60. There's no point for us to test that here at all. That being said, there are some phones out there that have displays that go up to 144 hertz or higher, so it's not completely out of the question to want to stream games like that. I just feel that most of the time it's not worth it because your biggest limiting factor is actually just going to be the controller you're using. The latency on that is more than likely going to be high enough that any benefit that you'd have from a high refresh rate display is going to be lost. That said, I'm really impressed with the results that we got here. All of the games that we played on this system ran really, really well. I played for a decent amount of time on all of them just to see if there would ever be any moments where we'd run into any issues, any stutters, anything like that. And honestly, while playing, the results are great. But I did say that there are asterisks. Of course, the main asterisk in all of this is the fact that you need to have a gaming computer to be able to do this. Now, it could be any gaming computer. Computer. It doesn't have to be one with an NVIDIA GPU. You could pretty much use any GPU vendor out there and you could expect to get some great results. Of course, the limiting factor is going to be the overall performance of that card itself, but the software is going to be able to utilize it to the best of its ability. And really, you could do this with whatever computer you have laying around. Even something that has a GTX 1060 or an RX 580 is going to give you a better result than most mini PCs out there and having that as a streaming computer means that the vast majority of games out there you're at least going to be able to play at 60 FPS at 1080p with settings that are above the absolute lowest. We could realistically put together a great sunshine streaming PC for around $300 and with that you could throw $100 mini PCs into any room that you want in your house and you now have systems that are capable of playing AAA titles with great results and if you're using Ethernet you're going to get some great results. That's another one of the asterisks here. This is heavily reliant on your internet connection because both systems that are communicating with each other here are on Ethernet within the same network the results we're getting are absolutely fantastic. If I was on Wi-Fi, it might be a different story. The Wi-Fi in my house is just not really that great. We're still using the Wi-Fi router that our ISP gave us, and at this point, it's probably close to eight years old. So because of that, there are limits to just how fast the connection that I can have wirelessly really is. I could go about upgrading my network to get some great results, over Wi-Fi, but that becomes an even bigger expense. And in all honesty, it's hard to beat the value of a $30 switch and as many Ethernet cables as you need. Sure, it's not a perfect solution because maybe running an Ethernet cable within the same room, extremely easy. Running an Ethernet cable to a room up an entire floor and three rooms down, that becomes a far bigger problem. And if that's your scenario, then investing in good Wi-Fi is going to pay for itself but it really just comes down to what you're willing to do personally we've run ethernet to practically every main computer that is used around here and as such pretty much every mini pc in this house 
could actually hook up to this system and start streaming any of these AAA titles. There are, of course, some crazy stuff you could do with Sunshine where you could have multiple users set up if you have a system with multiple GPUs and a CPU that is really able to actually get split up in a way that isn't going to just produce two really weak systems. And really, you could do some crazy self-hosting stuff with this, but just starting off, if you want to get this set up and you want the mini PCs around your house to be able to game, you could set this up with pretty much any gaming computer that you have out there, and I guarantee you it's going to give you better results than the iGPU in a mini PC like this. I might actually put together a video and show what you can put together on an extreme budget if you want to have a sunshine system running 24 7 but you don't want to break the bank and you also don't want a power bill that is going to make you cry there's some interesting options out there so let me know if you're interested in that and of course check out the instant gaming giveaway down below i'll catch you guys in the next one